This tutorial is part of our YouTube playlist, TriFlask API Development. So you can watch this course from the start if you prefer. Now, alternatively, if you enjoy this course, you can also purchase this course on Udemy, where you'll find deeper content, source code, and course updates. Links to both the playlist and Udemy course can be found in the video description. Using environment variable files offer a convenient and flexible way to manage and configure environment variables for Docker containers. It promotes better organization, security, and consistency in your Dockerized applications. Simply put, there are many different benefits using a Docker environment variable file. Now, we're going to swap over the environment variables here and utilize uh, a Docker environment variables file, which can be a .env file, or we can use a text file. So let's first of all create a new project folder for our environment variables. And you can see by doing this, we're centralizing all the environment variables for our project. It creates a flexible way for us to change the environment variables because essentially we might create a, a user here, maybe somewhere else in the code, we might use that again. So instead of having to repeat that multiple times, we can just centralize that within a file and then potentially utilize that multiple in multiple instances. So let's go ahead and create a, a new folder. Uh, that obviously will also make it easy for you to update and change in one place rather than having to scan through all the code and look for those instances. So let's create a new folder called environment vars. Inside of here, let's go ahead and create a environment variables for Postgres. So we use a .env, you can use text, but we use env. Inside of this file, we're going to need to specify two environment variables. That just matches what we have set up here in the environment settings inside of our uh, configuration for our database. So now all we need to do is remove the environment variables. I don't think we're gonna need those anymore for now. And then we can specify env, uh, oh, env file, sorry. And then let's go ahead and specify the new file. So dot refers to the folder, the current directory, in respect to where the Docker compose file is. So dot represents this folder structure here that we're, where the Docker file or the Docker compose file resides. And then we want to find the folder, which is env uh, underscore vars. That's the folder where we placed our environment variables. And in this instance, we're using postgres.env. Like I said, ultimately, I'm showing you this approach because it is good practice to avoid using or adding any sensitive information into the Docker Compose file. So having done that, let's go ahead and just rewind and delete all the containers. So I've gone into Docker Desktop, deleted the containers. Uh, we can keep the, the images there, that's not a problem. So we want to test to ensure that our new settings are being applied successfully. So they would be applied when we start up the container. So we go ahead and run Docker Compose up and the D. So that looks okay. So what we need to do now is double check the containers are running. So we can now go ahead and refresh. So I'm just going to navigate to AddMiner again. So we'll go to the home page, 8080. And then you can see that we're going to need to log in again. So Postgres, I just copy and paste that into the password and the database will be Postgres, login. It looks like everything is absolutely fine. So there we have a simple example of using the environment file setting or configuration in Docker. Now there's a few different ways of working with environment variables here in Docker. This is just one approach. So this is the workflow. We specify some environment variables here. Now, when we run Docker Compose, you can see that we're going to need this image. It restarts if it needs to, if it fails. And then it's going to pass into our container that we build using Docker Compose command like we did previously. It's going to pass in these environment variables or these variables into the new Postgres container that's going to be built. Now, part of the process of building that container, Postgres database is going to look for these environment settings that we're passing in. And it's then going to utilize that to configure and create our instance, our container, our Postgres container. So in this case, what happens when our Postgres container is built, it utilizes the username and password here to actually build a new user 
in the Postgres database in the container with the username password, Postgres, sorry, and the password is Postgres. So essentially we're just configuring the container when it's built so that we can then access our database, in this case through AdMiner, using the username and password that we specified. Now, if you navigate over to Docker Hub and have a look at the Postgres database, these are probably mandatory uh, variables that we need to set up in order to actually create a Docker container for our Postgres database. Like I said, you will find additional settings that you can go ahead and read through if you're looking for something a little bit more specific.